What's up guys? So looking back at 2020, looking back at my first season, if I had to start all over, how would I structure and build my breeding projects? What's up YouTube? It's Baker. Welcome back to Blue Line Morphs. Guys, it's Wednesday. New to the channel, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, give me a thumbs up, comment down below. Uh, Instagram, blue underscore line, underscore more, Facebook page, blue line, everything's blue line more. Listen, welcome to the channel. Post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Can we switch over to Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I think, in the new year? Do a little bullshit poll on Instagram. We'll see what's happening. Listen, guys, first and foremost, um, I guess we're 10 months deep in the whole YouTube journey, year and a half deep into the whole breeding journey, about a year or so deep into the Instagram journey. Um, I just want to say I really appreciate all the outpouring, just appreciation i guess of like my little bullshit channel here just kind of talking my way through this process talking my way through the journey um i really appreciate we hit 10,000 followers on instagram yesterday the day before that's insane i remember driving down to south carolina last january to visit my mom i was texting saul from saul's balls check him out uh we were talking about social media and instagram and possibly starting a youtube channel and um i remember i had like i just hit a thousand followers on, on instagram and i guess it was about 11 months ago, we just hit over 10,000. So, listen, guys, really, I really appreciate you guys just watching this stuff. Um, I really like documenting the journey. I like just, just telling like it is, etc., etc. So, that being said, tomorrow is New Year's Eve, man. Everyone have a healthy and safe New Year's Eve, right? We're not letting any finger fireworks off on the top of buildings. We're not doing any of that shit, right? We're just, everyone just have a good, healthy holiday, okay? Bring in 2021. Probably won't be much better than 2020, right? Things just don't go away. But that being said, guys, I'm going to do a little video like 2020 review pertaining to snakes, kind of how me getting COVID and all the other stuff. Uh, stay tuned for that. I might do that Monday, uh, Friday or Saturday, not probably maybe Friday night for the new, new Year's Day. Kind of talk about everything that went on, right? We'll see what happens. But regardless, uh, what else we got going on? Rats are doing well. Everyone's doing well. Chilling, chilling. Okay, let's get right into this video. So this video is kind of brought upon by a conversation. A lot of my videos, guys, are just me bullshitting with people either at work or some of my closer breeder friends, social media guys, people messaging me or texting me, just asking kind of some questions, a conversation I have. And I'm thinking to myself, if these people want to talk about this and I'm having these conversations with my friends, most likely other people want to talk about this too. So that's how I come up with some of these ideas for these videos, guys. Uh, videos, guys. Um, listen. So today's video is exactly what I said. If I had to start all over, how would I do this, okay? Um, how would I structure my breeding projects? What genes would I pick? Stuff like that. So I'm kind of going to ramble a little bit. I know a lot of people are giving me a little bit of grief. Show more snakes, show more snakes. My channel's a mixture of both, man. My channel, my rules. Go to another channel. That being said, shout out to Mikey from MK Ball Python, right from my shirt. All right, Baker, right? You guys seen this shirt before, but I will give him a shout out every time. All right, that being said, let's get into this. So... If you're semi-new to the channel, when I first got in this, well, reptiles in general, I've been in love with my entire life, but when I first got into breeding ball pythons, or wanting to breed ball pythons, first what happened is a joke, rats are out of their mind. I, I actually like, I know I'm like ADD here. I love rats, but they're right over there, and they're just beating the shit out of each other. They're cool little animals, aren't they? I have a lot of respect for them, it's such a shame. Anyway, um, when I first got into this hobby, I kind of just ran amok, right? You guys remember, I went to a show, I literally turned left, saw a Corglo het pied male that now Saul has. Um, bought it, went on Craigslist, bought a bell, bought this, bought that. Kind of stumbled upon some pretty good snakes, relatively cheap. Um, with that being said, I had no real rhyme or reason to how I was collecting these genes or what my projects were going to be. So I just had like a plethora of crap. It kind of worked out for me well now because I kind of structured it accordingly. But with that, fucking nuts. With that being said, um, let's talk about if I wanted to start over what I would do, okay? Now, with my cluster, uh, what the hell? with my, my shit show situation, I kind of honed it back in and came up with this. This is how I've been trying to structure my projects, especially when it comes to recessives, okay? Specifically, piebald clowns and puzzles. My plan is to have three or four female visuals that are good to go, multiple incomplete dominance on top of the visual recessive, and then get a really powerful male for them and breed it to them. Then eventually what I want to do is have two lines of breeding. In other words, you guys know I have the banana pied male, then I have that powerful Ozzy pied male, right? The Ozzy pied male is going to be part of that upper tier, upper echelon um, 
breeding projects, right? So hopefully I'm hitting the orange dream, leopard, you know, fire, pied animals, right? Or the multiple four or five incomplete dominance on top of the pied. While the banana pie is probably just gonna stay about one or two gene animals. That way, when you go to my Morph Market store, or I do have these, uh, what do they call them? Mm -hmm. The shows, and I have my booths and whatnot, you're gonna have a wide spectrum of animals. I don't want somebody to come to my booth, or somebody to go to my website, somebody to go to my Instagram, whatever network or platform you're looking at, and they see an animal they really wanna get from Blue Line Morphs, right? And simply put, maybe they can't afford an $1,800 or $2,000 or $1,000 animal, but hey, you know what? I can't afford that orange cream, yellow belly, pastel pied male, but I can afford that banana pied male. I can afford that normal pied male. I really want to be able to provide that for people. Um, you don't have to go top end if you can, don't, can't, don't want to, or you can't afford to, or just at that time you don't have the means to. So the plan is to have like lower and upper. Um, that being said, I plan on having three or four females for lower, three or four females for upper, and then have the males accordingly. And this is gonna kind of rain through all my projects from clown, pie bolts, and puzzles, okay? Now, when it comes to incomplete dominance, I kind of just run it amok right now, right? You guys know that I got that spark animal I got from Redline Pythons. He's going to a couple male, a uh, few females, and then I got the Coral Glow Black, which I'm male. He's going to a few females. That's how I kind of try to hone my projects back in. But if I had to wipe everything clean, if I was starting fresh, God forbid something happened to my entire collection. Let's say I got out of ball pythons for a couple of years, which I don't ever want to do. Let's say it happens, I gotta start over. Or let's say you're just getting into breeding, you wanna you kinda of go big or kind of do what I'm doing here, semi try to get a semi big operation going. This is how I would set it up. I would pick what genes I wanna work with, okay? Uh, well, I'll talk about recessives, then I'll talk about incomplete dominance and how they're kind of different, how I would structure them and how I would start them. So what I would do is Let's, you know, let's just take pies, clowns, and puzzles. It's kind of what I'm doing now, what I have here. Uh, eventually, I want to get a desert ghost, but we've got to wait for Rob to produce some animals. Racer, reptiles, Rob is not gone, guys, I promise. He's just ironing some shit out. He will be back. So, this is what I would do. Let's say I want to get into pies. And let's say, for example, maybe I can't afford these really expensive uh, pied females. Well, backtrack. What I would do is I would start with females. I would start with three or four visually uh visual with the lower end stuff like pipes realistically guys and pied females about 400 bucks right obviously the puzzles are more expensive so i'm talking about your lower i don't want to say lower class or your more readily available and cheaper uh recessives i would buy three or four visual females okay as hatchlings maybe one or two incomplete dominance on top of the visual recessive okay so let's say it's a, a pastel entry pie then i get an orange and yellow belly pie and then whatever whatever pie whatever whatever pie i have those four females I would start raising them up. Once they hit about a year old, then I would buy a male for them, okay? And this male would hopefully be a little more powerful, probably something like the Aussie boy I have right here, which, you know, he's an orange dream, yellow belly, pastel, fire, leopard, pied male. I'd probably buy something like that when they're at a year old. Hopefully those females are all good eaters. Obviously you can't predict that. But let's say they're all at 700, 800, 900 grams at that point. You know, you got Harlem over here. She's, I don't know, eight months old and like 800 grams. You never know. So you one year mark, I'm gonna pick up that male, okay? Once I pick up that male, I'm gonna start raising them up. I'm gonna give them 12 months to get to size, okay? At 12 month mark, which is right around when my core will last trick Mojave male was, when he hit about 900 to 1,000 grams of the male, at about a year old, 13 months old. So at this point, I would have one male, about a year old, hopefully 1,000 grams. Again, we don't know who was gonna eat well, et cetera, et cetera, holdbacks, I mean not holdbacks, setbacks, situations like that. Then hopefully I have four females, three or four females that are visually um, visual recessives that are about two year mark. Hopefully at that point, they're in that 1400 to 1700 gram range and we're good to go to start those projects. Once I start those projects, I start combining some of the incomplete dominance on the males and the females to produce better holdbacks. Then I would hold back some of those females, raise them up, and they would become my upper tier while their original females my lower tier, okay? And as the projects progressed, you, once the the original females got bumped down to tier three. Maybe we sell them off and help some people out there just starting or starting to breed, okay? But you never go wrong with more pies. We'll see what happens with that. But that's how it would start over. And I pretty much would run that through clowns and puzzles the same way. Now clowns, some of your more pricey clown visuals might be really expensive. So maybe you get a couple hats involved in there, okay? Like my, my uh, high intensity orange dream yellow belly fire clown girl. Let me show you one snake, right? This is the bull python channel. Maybe some, have one snake. That way people can't say, show me snakes. There you go, here's a snake. So the, this girl right here, looks like she might be going to the shed. This girl right here is gorgeous, right? Hasn't eaten in two weeks for me though, which kind of pisses me off. I wanted her to get the size. High intensity orange dream, 
yellow belly fire clown female, right? She's about 3,500 bucks, three grand, 3,500 bucks from Ozzy Boyd. Really powerful animal, really nice animal. Let's be honest here. If you want to start on your clowns, are you really going to rein through and have four girls that are, you know, sixteen to twenty thousand dollars a piece? If you can, by all means, let it rock. But some of your more expensive recessives, I don't see any shame in getting some head game going as long as you have some powerful, incomplete dominance on top of the heads. Okay, so the same principle with the pies I spoke about before, but this time maybe you get a couple of visuals with a couple heads and let it rock. That's what I'm doing with my puzzles currently, right? I have those two females I posted today on Instagram. The Orange Dream Lesser Het Puzzle, Possible Het Hypo, and then the Orange Dream Yellow Belly Pastel Spider Het Puzzle Girl. I'm raising those hats up. I want to get one or two more maybe visuals, lower end visual puzzle girls, and get a really powerful male. That's how I would structure my recessives. Does that make sense? Ask any questions down below. I mean, that, that's how I would start over if I want to start over with recessives. Now, when it comes to the incomplete dominance, I would kind of do things reverse. This is what I would do. Uh, just to get this cranking, and get this going, because obviously when it comes to those genetics, you have 50-50 chance passing it on, whether or not the male or the female is, is having them. So I would probably kind of do what I did this time. I did it by mistake. I would get a bunch of breed ready from people I trust, right? From, from my friends or my buddies or big time breeders. I would get a, few, a couple breed ready females with one or two Incomplete dominant traits in them, right? I got my orange dream fire girl. I got two normal big girls, right? Love my normal normals. I got a spider girl, bumblebee girl. I got Luna. I got a few other, well, I got a big pastel girl. So I have all these big breed ready females, 2,500 grams, 2,700 grams, 3,000 grams, etc., etc., with one or two genes in there. At breed ready, they're not that expensive, right? But then I would drop a, a decent amount of money on a solid boy. Probably something like this. You've seen him a million times. I got him for a steal because Richie hooked me up. This is the Corgo Black Star Trick Mojave male. Okay, nothing crazy in him. Looks really nice, but why not put him to three or four females that have some? He's been frisky lately. I tell you, he's probably gonna try to tag me. Get in here. Uh, why not put him to three or four? All right, you stay now. Why not put him to three or four females? Try to reproduce himself. Make some nice. You know, maybe put some of those uh, codoms from the female on top of this already nice snake. That's how I build my incomplete dominant trait. Just because you know it, it, they're a little cheaper. Hey, honey, get in there. They're a little cheaper and a little more. Oh my goodness, he wants to get in there with a girl. After this video, I'm going to pair him up, and I think he's ready to go now. The reason why I would structure my incomplete dominant or the codoms like that is because it's more, it's easier to reproduce them. Therefore, I would kind of want to get the edge on uh, the projects, get the edge on. I'll say the competition, get the edge on my business and get it going. And that's why I would invest in breed ready females. That way, when I'm waiting for my recessive girls to get ready, waiting for that recessive male to purchase that recessive male to get him ready, in those two years, I'm breeding and making some nice animals that are more cost efficient, more, more cost friendly when it comes to our customers or just our friends in general. So that's how I would structure all my breeding projects. If I had to start over, that's what I would do. I'm kind of trying to hone myself in now. I have what I have. I love what I have. With that being said, sometimes deals pop up. Take advantage. Put the shit in your rack if you got the space. No big deal. That's what I've done with a couple of the girls in here. And I'm going to utilize them now, okay? Or they're going to sit and I'm have cool pets. But that's how I would structure it. That's how I would change things. What do you guys think? Any comments? Um, that's how I'm trying to rearrange things now. Upper and lower tiers and stuff. We're going to keep this thing going. If I get big enough, maybe I have three tiers, right? We'll see what happens, guys. Either way, listen. Have a good New Year's, man. Please be safe. I'm looking forward to making that video. It might be a little bit of a lengthy video, a little rant video about how my 2020 went, right? I'm going to take you guys through creating YouTube, creating social media, COVID, to breeding, to screwing up. I want to talk about everything. I'll make a timetable. It'll be fun. Right? A couple of beers. They'll do live. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Either way, guys, listen, have a good new year. Be safe. Listen, it is 540. I'm posting this in an hour and 50 minutes because I'm lazy and I procrastinate. I'm sorry. Listen, guys, hope everybody's doing well. We'll see you later. We'll see you next time. See you next year, right? How corny is that? Be safe. Please remember, watch a six.